Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's Mall Mechanics. Come to look at a Toyota Igo here. Um, it's one of these ones where it's been to Toyota twice and it's been to a regular garage, uh, but no one can seem to tell her what the issue is. Okay, first thing we're going to do is get inside and just hook up the smart box here ready for diagnostic. Start up the engine. Now I can feel the car is a little bit shaky, but it is a three cylinder. I don't think it's any more shaky than normal, maybe slightly. So, what her complaint is the car is intermittently losing power. Um, and it just doesn't feel as doesn't feel as nice as it used to. Um, she brought it to Toyota once. Uh, they said they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. Then she had an engine management light come on. She brought it back to Toyota. They said they still still didn't know what the issue was. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know why the engine light was on because they they didn't give her a code or anything. They just said they didn't know what was wrong with it. She then brought it to a regular garage. They don't know what's wrong with it either. So let's get our diagnostics running. Okay, so we just completed a scan there. Engine is clear. Uh, we've got low voltage or high voltage battery positive. Let's see, we've got 14.1218, sorry, which is normal. Uh, ECM. No faults here. Go to read the data. Right, so what I've done here is I've just clicked all of the stuff that I want to have a look at. Uh, EVAP system. So I need to get that loading up. Calculated load. Cylinder 3 misfire count. Oh, she's increasing quickly there. So it looks like on live data here we've got we've got small amounts of misfire on cylinder three. And that seems to reset to zero there. You see we've got counting how many misfires are on cylinder three there. So you definitely got a problem with cylinder three. Sensors working. Okay, so it looks like we've got a problem on cylinder three. I don't know why no one could tell her that. I think dealers don't really go into live data, maybe. Um, so let's have a look under the bonnet. So we're underneath the bonnet here, we're just opening these little tabs. Just gonna try and get get the airbox out and see if we can get down to where the cylinders are. Just check the condition of the air filter while we're in there. Doesn't look like it's blocked. Now I do apologize if there's any uh, wind noise because it is very windy here today. So you can see there, it looks like it's been running a bit rich or lean. Um, right, the cylinder three should be this one. So let's unplug it. And we'll get this uh, glow plug out, uh, sorry, <laughs> spark plug out. And we'll get a 10 mil socket there to open the clamp bolt. And we can just pull that ignition coil out. Have a little look down inside. Yep, looks like the, the coil is, looks okay. It's not bent up or anything. Sometimes you can get the little spring inside is all twisted up and pushed in. So we're gonna pull the plug out now. So it looks like the gap 
between the plug is slightly bigger than it should be um, I think maybe the plugs worn away a little bit but we'll pull out the plug from number two and have a look at that as well so we've got both plugs here um, not really much in it to be honest but you can see there the plugs have you know they've got this damage here where they they've got the rust coming up through the top I'd say it's most likely just down to the spark plugs here but what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch the spark plugs around from cylinder 2 so this is just the plug from cylinder 2 here I'm gonna put that in cylinder 3 and we'll put this one in cylinder 2 so we can try and narrow narrow down pinpoint exactly where the problem is so if the fall if the misfire now moves to cylinder 2 we know it's the plug uh, but if the misfire stays the same it's most likely going to be the ignition coil uh, but we'll try the plugs first and then we'll switch the ignition coils secondly okay so we've switched the spark plugs but we're not switching the ignition coils we're putting the original coils back in the original location because we don't want to switch the pair because that will just point us to either one or the other we want to do them one at a time so switch just the plug plugs first right that's all back together let's start up and see what's what okay so we can see they're all reset to zero and we'll start it up we'll see which cylinder still misfires so we still got a cylinder three misfire so we'll change over the coil plug now Okay, we moved the ignition coil from cylinder 3 onto cylinder 2. Let's test it again. Okay, let's start it up. Please don't say it's mis misfire 3 still. Hopefully it moves to number 2. No, it doesn't. So we've still got a misfire on cylinder 3. So if we accelerate the car up to where it's not idling, can see the misfire stops it doesn't move from number four there got no misfires no misfires now if we let the car idle then it starts misfiring on cylinder three okay so what i'm doing now is i've just taken out a couple of 12 mil bolts there and there from the fuel rail and we're just going to get the fuel rail out and swap over the fuel injectors so I just loosen up the uh, accelerator cable there just so I can pull it out and it'll just give me a little bit more room to actually pull the uh, injectors out here so just move that to the side and we should be able to just pull them up and get them out so I'm just going to pull off the injectors off cylinder one and swap it to cylinder three so now we can just put cylinder three uh, injector in here. Let's squeeze that up there. Right, the fuel injectors are back in now. And of course we've had a look through all of the wiring, see if we can see any damage anywhere, which we can't. Because, I mean, the easiest route with this sort of stuff is always, if you've got a misfire, usually the spark plug is the first thing to check that's the easiest if not then it's the coil pack um and if it's not that maybe a fuel injector if it's not a fuel injector it could be low compression on the cylinder um or there are some other stuff that may may be able to cause it on some cars like uh, vacuum leaks but uh, we've got this switched around now so we're going to connect it all back up and test it again so would you believe it's still misfiring on cylinder three so it's, the, it's not the uh, fuel injector, it's not the spark plug, it's not the ignition coil. So I just run a compression test and turns out it's got low pressure, low compression on cylinder 3 there. So we were able to find out pretty quickly what the problem was in the case of it had a misfire. But obviously it took us a fair while there to pinpoint the problem. Now just had a word with a customer and they said uh, just recently the car um, had an engine oil light come on they checked it and there was no engine oil in the car so I'd say I put it down to that obviously if your engine oil is low you're going to have 
wear on your pistons, similar tree as the one that suffered for it. Uh, so we're going to just put the airbox back on now. So that's it on the iGo. Bad news, unfortunately. Um, not something I can fix here roadside as a, ro as a roadside mechanic. Um, but it, uh, you know, it is running. Um, I'd probably just advise her to uh, put up with it until it actually just failed because, I mean, the car is not really worth a lot of money. Yeah, so that's it really. The car is working, but you know, she just said it's just not as responsive as it used to be. So uh, that's it. We're all done with the diagnosis. Um, if she wants to get it repaired, I can advise her to go to uh, a few garages that I would recommend. So that's it. We will see you on one of the next videos.